Good afternoon. Uh, it's a pleasure to see all of you here today. Welcome to all of you who are currently watching your computers, your iPads, and your phones. Uh, we're delighted to have you as well, and uh, really a very, very special thank you to everyone who's seated in this room. I know that we all have very busy lives, and there are many things on our plates, and uh, I just want you to know how grateful I am that you took the time to uh, share this moment of reflection and dialogue with us this afternoon. I also want to recognize one of our trustees who's here with me, or with us, uh, Judge Mimi Wright. And thank you, Mimi, for your dedication and wisdom that you provide to us as a university and your service as a trustee. It means a lot to us. Thank you very much. There will be time afterwards for questions. That's why the mics are up front. So uh, if you do have questions, uh, there'll be some time for you to pose those. So as I said, I believe it's very important for us to pause and reflect together on our successes and our challenges, to reconfirm our continued dedication to our students and our work, and to embrace a shared vision that will help us thrive into the future as one St. Thomas. Before I begin, I want to express my gratitude for each of you. I can't tell you how important you are to me and how important you are to this community. We could not be the type of university we are if it weren't for your incredible dedication to your work here and to our students. So I really want to say thank you. I want to begin my remarks by reflecting on this academic year. Several events this past fall semester challenged us, and I would also say inspired us to be better. I'm proud that we responded to these events guided by our convictions and with a recommitment to our students. So what has transpired this academic year? First, the healthy number of incoming first-year students who marched through our arches this fall was truly humbling and inspiring. Students and families are choosing St. Thomas, and they expect us to deliver on our promises of academic excellence, personal attention, character formation, and preparation for the complexities of the contemporary world. As in the past, we rose to the occasion to serve these students. We pulled together to tackle the logistical challenges of doing so, even though there were almost 200 more of them than we expected. But we did it, and we did it in the high quality St. Thomas way that we always do it. From the energy of our new students and from our returning students, we found inspiration. Also this fall, we dealt with the tragic deaths of two dear students. It challenged us to remember that we have the honor of spending only a few precious, vulnerable years, and sometimes even months, with these young adults who choose St. Thomas. It certainly challenged me to be grateful for this honor and to remember the incredible responsibility we have to each student who marches through the arches, attends our classes, and becomes a part of our community. This fall, we also were challenged by racism. The racial incident that occurred on our campus jarred our community. It challenged us to make an intentional commitment to become a more inclusive, equitable, and just institution. It inspired us to make systemic changes that will help our university thrive. In addition, this fall, we, primarily the faculty community, you, primarily the faculty community, engaged in a challenging and thorough discussion about the St. Thomas curriculum, resulting in an historic vote of the entire faculty for a new undergraduate curriculum. This discussion challenged us to look anew at what a St. Thomas education should encompass. Faculty were asked to ensure that our students are given a liberal arts experience that prepares them for a new and complex world. 
They were challenged to both adapt to the changing requirements and expectations of employers and to keep our core values intact. And again, our faculty were inspired to keep the needs of our students top of mind as they made these decisions. While many of these events of the fall were challenging and some were very painful for our community, they forced us to recommit to our purpose and to reflect upon what we as trustees, faculty, staff, and administrators, why are we here? Who are we serving? We rose collectively to these challenges with a recommitment to serve our students and to do so within the context of our mission and convictions. We reflect on our mission frequently. Most of you can recite our mission. I give Father Deese credit for that. I, he's, when he was uh, really inspiring our community to articulate our mission, I am told that he said he had to be able to be written on the back of a business card so we could all have it in our pockets and we would all know it. But some of us are a little less familiar with our convictions. And our convictions were adopted by our Board of Trustees at the same time. They were adopted in October 2004. And these convictions still beautifully articulate the guideposts for our work today, just as they did in 2004. And if you don't mind, I'm going to uh, take the liberty. It'll just take about 60 seconds to read them. I think it'll give, reinforce the kind of community that we are. We value intellectual inquiry as a lifelong habit, the unfettered and impartial pursuit of truth in all its forms, the integration of knowledge across disciplines, and the imaginative and creative exploration of new ideas. We create a culture among faculty, students, and staff that recognizes the power of ideas and rewards rigorous thinking. We actively engage intellectual tradition which values the fundamental compatibility of faith and reason and fosters meaningful dialogue directed toward the flourishing of human culture. We respect the dignity of each person and value the unique contributions that each brings to the greater mosaic of the university community. We strive to create a vibrant, diverse community in which together we work for a more just and inclusive society. We foster a caring culture that supports the well-being of each member. We celebrate the achievements of all members of our community in goals attained and obstacles overcome, and in all things give praise to God. Those are the artic articulation of the seven convictions that you see that we're featuring on the banners around the campus. And I urge you to take the time to read them periodically. It's not just the titles that we give to them some really rich language that describes what our commitments are as a community. So our responses to these challenges of the fall were un undertaking not only in this context of our mission and our convictions, but also in the context of our strategic plan. Our strategic plan has been guiding us for the last five years. Early on in my tenure, it was very clear that the community was ready to commit to a plan. That really wanted to, we really wanted to identify our priorities and hold ourselves accountable for making progress towards them. We started by articulating a new vision. That vision is the University of St. Thomas, a Catholic comprehensive urban university, is known nationally for academic excellence, that prepares students for the complexities of the contemporary world through disciplinary and interdisciplinary inquiry and deep intercultural understanding. We inspire students to lead, work, and serve with the skill and empathy vital to creating a better world. So that was the vision <clears throat> with which the eight strategic priorities are intended to help us attain. And I think we've made great progress on that vision. And I think we've made great progress on making it a reality. <clears throat> Let me just, <clears throat> I'm sorry. I'm not contagious. I just have a cough. <laughs> um, so what has happened? What's the 60,000, if you're flying over the university at 60,000 feet, what has happened in the last five years? 
How have we made that vision a reality? Well, a lot of ways. We hired three academic deans in the College of Arts and Sciences, the Doherty Family College, and the School of Education. New deans who joined an incredible group of existing deans, and a group of deans who now are constantly working with our faculty to improve our academic offerings. They all respond to the needs of our current and future students with an ear to the ground, listening and adapting to the changing landscape that our graduates face. They seek to constantly improve the educational experience that we're providing our students to better prepare them for the future. We launched a campus master plan. It will have a profound impact on our physical campus, and you're gonna to begin to see that this spring. This spring, we will begin a significant transformation of North Campus, just north of here, with the construction of two new residence halls, one for first year students and one for second year students, and with the expansion of the Chapel of St. Thomas Aquinas. We launched the Doherty Family College and we'll soon celebrate our first graduating class. Who thought that milestone would be here so quickly? Certainly, we have changed the lives of our DFC students, but moreover, we as a university have learned valuable uh, lessons and renewed a deep connection to our mission by knowing and serving our DFC students. They have made us a better university. We've learned about resiliency, understanding, and empathy, and we've been challenged. And sometimes we fail, but we keep trying to be better. And that's the point. We have to keep trying to be better. Time has flown by. We're now preparing to guide and support these DFC students as they pursue their bachelor's degrees. Because as we've always said, the success of our commitment to them will be their attainment of their four-year degree here or elsewhere. And we intend to walk with them in these next two years. More than ever before, we are intentionally focused on retaining our students and helping them fully engage in their St. Thomas education and progress to graduation in four years. As you've heard me say many times, the biggest contribution to high student debt is time to graduation. We have a commitment, a responsibility to support our students to graduate in four years. Academic Affairs and Student Affairs together launched the Center for Student Achievement. The Center for Student Achievement is our new central hub. It's designed to connect students with resources across campus, and it is making a difference and proactively guiding and providing targeted support for students. For the first time in our history, we have nearly a 69% four-year graduation rate. And that's nearly four point increase compared to five years ago. That's huge. And we have to continue to work to increase that. But I'm so proud of that work. And that work is happening because we've put the teams together to work with our students, to identify their needs, and to walk with them hand in hand on this journey. We're instituting a new tuition model next year. It also will encourage students to stay on track to graduate while taking full advantage of their four-year experience at St. Thomas. We are recognizing the unique needs of our veteran students. The University of St. Thomas was just designated as a military-friendly campus for the second straight year. This reflects our support for veteran students across many areas, this designation. And beyond the opening of our Veterans Resource Center in November 2017, a range of new programming programming and events have been instituted to support our veterans. Our goal is to make St. Thomas the most veteran-friendly campus in the upper Midwest, and we're well on the way to achieving that goal. We launched the Center for the Common Good to solidify our strong tradition of Tommies engaging in the community and in the world. 
The work of the center has allowed us to engage with a network of nonprofits, such as Catholic Relief Services, Catholic Charities, and Ashoka. It has become a hub that connects our students to meaningful opportunities to make sustainable change in our world. Through the center, more than 3,000 Tommies log about 60,000 hours per year, working with 200 partner nonprofit organizations, schools, and agencies. And working with faculty, the center has offered 70 courses designed to engage directly in the community. This robust work is why the University of St. Thomas has been chosen to host the 2020 Ashoka U Changemaker Exchange. This is an annual meeting of about 700 social innovators and faculty, staff, and students from Ashoka U colleges and universities. It's occurring right now in San Diego, and we have about 15 people there as we speak. And they will be announcing on Saturday that next year's exchange will be here in the Twin Cities and hosted by the University of St. Thomas. And Rob Riley and Karen Lang will be there to uh, accept that uh, honor and to uh, invite the, the Shokuyu participants and others to be with us here next spring. We're hoping they don't have it in February next year. We're trying to talk them into March or April, but uh, we will see. But as you know, the Ashoka U is a select community of 45 changemaker campuses from around the world. And it places St. Thomas in distinguished company, allowing us to learn from and share with like-minded institutions. Yet we don't do this work in communities for recognition. That is definitely not the point. The point is providing transformational experiences for our students, giving our students the skills they need and the experience they need to engage in the world and make it a better place. What else? For the first time in our history, we are planning for the implementation of a two-year residency requirement on campus. We are going to require our first and second year students to live on campus. We believe that living on campus and being fully engaged in the St. Thomas experience will help our students persist, thrive, and take advantage of the full range of learning opportunities St. Thomas has to offer. And work is currently underway to ensure that we implement this requirement in a way that is equitable and accessible to all students. We want all of our freshmen and sophomores to be able to live on campus and to enjoy the, just the energy and the experience of being here in community. Next fall, we will launch the Center for Wellbeing <clears throat> putting the physical, mental, and spiritual health of our students front and center. We know that the best outcomes for he health care are emerging from an integrated model which addresses wellness from prevention and early detection to ongoing coordination of care of the whole person. So we're taking this bold step, and it's primarily been in response to the increasing mental health needs of our students, and the need to address those in context of the care for the whole person. So much has happened. There's been a great deal of accomplishments. And throughout this incredible list of accomplishments, we have been guided by our mission. And as we look ahead to future initiatives that will advance St. Thomas, we continue to have significant opportunities to infuse our mission as a Catholic university in intentional ways. First, we have the unique opportunity before us to ensure that we infuse Catholic intellectual tradition and Catholic social teaching as we implement our undergraduate curriculum. We'll be working on implementing our curriculum over the next year plus maybe two years, Richard, I don't know, <laughs> probably. The Catholic intellectual tradition is at its core about a search for truth and helping our students engage in the questions and challenges of our time. Passing the new curriculum is only a first step. We have to implement it in a way that we help guide the intellectual, spiritual, and ethical formation of our students 
while instilling academic excellence and a search for truth. There are several opportunities we have before us to infuse these ideals, starting with the first year experience. The first year experience will give all new students the opportunity to explore a mission-based theme across at least two disciplines and connect it to Catholic social teaching. We also will integrate ideas and perspectives across disciplines and communities in the new integrations in the humanities courses that we will be developing. The new signature work requirement advances our mission by asking upper class students to call on their entire St. Thomas experience and reflect on, engage with, and respond to a problem. Calling upon that entire St. Thomas experience. And finally, the enhanced curriculum experience will encourage students to explore learning opportunities and experiences outside of their primary majors. We need to develop those opportunities for new mission-based minor certificates and other guided experiences. So I want to encourage and challenge the faculty to fully embrace these opportunities to infuse our mission and create innovative experiences for students that connect with the mission in robust and meaningful ways. The real work is before us to animate this curriculum and to bring it alive. And it's such a great opportunity, one that we haven't had in decades, but so important. Secondly, as we look for opportunities to infuse our mission, I want to emphasize once again, and for as many times as it takes, the importance of our work and the importance that we embrace our institutional's responsibility to combat racism. We can take the guidance directly from the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops, recent pastoral letter on racism. It emphasizes that every human being is created in God's image, and it emphasizes how racism manifests itself, not only among individuals, but is embedded in our institutions, our systems, and our structures. Let me quote briefly from that letter, again written by the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops. As a nation, we have never sufficiently contended with the impact of overt racism nor have we spent the necessary time to examine where the racist attitudes of yesterday have become a permanent part of our perceptions, practices, and policies of today, and how they've been enshrined in our social, political, and economic structures." End quote. Our action plan to combat racism has begun to take root. It's begun to take root because of the work that you're doing as our trustees, as our faculty, as our staff, as our students. And we are going to spend the time here to examine this. We are going to spend the necessary time. And as this pastoral letter goes on to say, racism can only end if we contend with the policies and institutional barriers that perpetuate and preserve the inequality, economic and social, that we see all around us. Racism is not just how we act towards one another. It's embedded. It's embedded, as I said, in our structures, our institutions, our policies. It's systemic. We have to examine our own institutional barriers at St. Thomas. We need to examine our policies when it comes to hiring, retaining staff and faculty, recruiting students, creating curriculum, having classroom discussions, reporting bias, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So many of you are engaging in this work already, and that's been so inspiring to me and to our entire community. But this must be a permanent and sustaining part of each of our jobs and how we operate as a university. It is up to us to ensure that this work persists and sustains cultural and structural change at St. Thomas and beyond. For me personally, this has challenged me to think about my own racial identity and stereotypes. I've joined a CEO cohort, it's a cohort group in the Twin Cities, that is meeting regularly with facilitators and trainers from the Wilder Foundation. 
We meet to more fully understand racism as a social construct and as a system that we individually have been socialized into. I recently finished reading the book White Fragility, and I've been trying to think about my own white fragility and trying to seek to determine where my own prejudices play a part, because they're there. I've grown up in a world that they could not be there. But where do my own prejudices play a part? And where do I need to re-examine my actions and interactions with others? I'm pleased to say that our Board of Trustees has embraced this commitment. They too believe we must more fully understand and combat racism. They formed an ad hoc task force of our board. They just formed it, uh, just uh, voted to approve it at our February meeting. A group of trustees that want to walk on this journey with us and help us. And I'm so grateful for that. Because this has to be all the way through our organization. From the top through all the way through. And it is. So important work to come. But thank you for being on the journey. Thank you for being on the journey with us. The last topic I want to mention about opportunities to infuse our mission is around sustainability. I want to mention how our commitment to sustainability and this renewed focus that we're embracing around sustainability is a commitment firmly rooted in Catholic social thought. Pope Francis's encyclical on the environment, Laudato Si, also known as On Care for Our Common Home, compels us to pay increasing attention to how we care for our people and our planet. It emphasizes love as a motivating force. Pope Francis calls on everyone in the spirit of love, individuals, institutions, and nations, to do their part to protect the environment. And by doing so, we will improve the lives of the poor and guarantee a better world for future gener generations. This compelling call to embrace our Catholic mission will guide our work here on campus to become a more environmentally conscious campus. Our goal at St. Thomas is to, quote, catalyze university-wide engagement and create an embedded culture of sustainability that prepares students to be sustainability leaders during their university years and beyond. Thanks to the work on, of many on campus, for quite a few years, actually Father Deese was the first to sign our commitment to become a carbon neutral campus by 2035. But we are renewing our efforts to answer this call. And last year we completed our first comprehensive sustainability assessment. And we earned a silver stars rating from the Association for the Advancement of Sustainability in Higher Education. Silver is not the highest, but it's quite high for the first time that you've been rated and we're really proud of it. And now our Sustainability Council, which comprised of faculty, staff, and students from a number of disciplines and roles across campus, is proposing a comprehensive action plan to advance this commitment to sustainability. And we will infuse sustainability in our academic programs, our student life, our facilities and operations, our public engagement, and our administrative functions. We are doing it, and we will find ways to do it at deeper and greater levels. So thank you, Amir, for leading this effort. I saw you walk in. You're here somewhere. There he is, over there. Thank you, Amir. So we have some important ways that we are infusing our mission, important new opportunities. We also have <clears throat> important new opportunities to remain relevant to society's needs, important things that we are going to be focused on. We have to always be looking to how we better prepare our institution and our students for the future. How we are preparing them for the challenges of tomorrow. St. Thomas, frankly, has always had a strong tradition from long ago, decades ago, century ago actually, of helping our graduates stay relevant to the changing forces in the economy. The constantly shifting demands of the workforce and the needs of society. 
We prepare students for the complexities of a contemporary world, but we do this first and foremost by instilling a strong liberal arts foundation that's going to provide the resiliency and flexibility for a lifetime of learning and adaptability. And at the same time, thanks to our faculty and deans and staff, we stay attuned to our external partners. We stay very closely connected to the emerging skills and competencies that are demanded by employers and needed in society. We are not in an ivory tower. That has not been the type of university that we've ever been. We are out in the communities where our students are going to be working and serving. And we're learning from them constantly. And I am proud that we're developing ideas and curriculum with this external input. And I'm proud that St. Thomas has a reputation for listening to employers and adapting to the changing world. It is with this eye toward the future and response to the needs of our society that we are developing our College of Health. Every year, we turn students away from St. Thomas who seek a career in nursing. I ask our tour, tour guides every year when I have my time with them, what's the one question you're asked that you wish you had a different answer for? And they consistently say, do you have a nursing major? <laughs> or do you have a nursing program? So there's clearly a demand out there. Our students are asking for this. The demand is also evident in the statistics. According to the state dem demographer, our, our state demographer in Minnesota, over the next two decades, more than 600,000 Minnesotans are expected to reach age 65 or older. The demographics of our population is shifting and we're gonna have many more people above 65 and fewer people below 25. At the same time, Minnesota's medical care field the doctors, nurses, and other primary care roles is expected to grow by tens of thousands of jobs by the year 2024. So our College of Health will embody the university's commitment to Catholic social teaching. It will focus on the marginalized and underserved, and it will define health and wellness in terms of the dignity of the whole person. We have a unique opportunity at St. Thomas to create undergraduate and graduate programs with a really new interdisciplinary approach to basically train integrated healthcare teams, to train together social workers, mental health counselors, nurses, and maybe one day PAs who are focused on integrated care of the whole person. We have another unique advantage that's just as important, actually, when you look at trends in healthcare. Because of our expertise in healthcare analytics, we have expertise in artificial intelligence, which is becoming an increasingly important, uh, playing an increasingly important role in diagnostics. We have a powerful focus on innovation and entrepreneurship. We're uniquely poised to offer healthcare programs and not just about keeping people well and healing, healing sick, but explore systems changes that can improve health outcomes of individuals and communities. We can be at the forefront of infusing some of this technology and data into how we're thinking about caring and keeping communities and individuals well. And, and we can work across disciplines in doing that. So I'm excited about the possibilities to showcase our students in the healthcare field as you know, we are in the process of hiring a founding dean and a director of nursing for the college, and we're hopeful that we'll be able to complete those searches uh, before the end of this semester. But we won't stop searching till we find the right person. And our search committee is committed to that, and I know our provost and our board is committed to that. Our interdisciplinary approach is also spreading throughout St. Thomas in other ways. A model you will see prominently in the near future. We are working to develop what we are calling a new academic STEAM complex on South Campus. campus. So what is STEAM? S-T-E-A-M. Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, and Math. 
a STEAM complex on South Campus. Be an, it will be an experiential learning complex for our students. Visioning is currently underway. We're engaging our deans, in particular Dean Williams and Dean Weinkoff, but also faculty, to vision this complex. The future demands workspace, lab space, collaborative space that brings students together in cross-disciplinary teams. That is today. That's not even tomorrow. That's today. And it will increasingly be tomorrow. So the design of this academic complex will inspire a new kind of collaboration among students and faculty and will create a hub of innovation. You know, we have built our St. Thomas science and engineering programs to be empowered by the liberal arts. We often say our engineers are better engineers because of their liberal arts background. It's very true. With this new expansion, we're gonna call on our science and engineering programs to foster the technical and digital literacy that will empower our liberal arts graduates. And our liberal arts graduates will be more prepared to apply their liberal arts skills because of their enhanced technical and digital literacy. So the new space will help us meet the increasing demands for engineering and lab space. It will provide collaborative performance space for our music program, something desperately needed, but also a venue to showcase our other disciplines to the community. The space will allow for a living and learning lab, and it represents the type of future environments our students will be working in. This vision of bringing together the best of St. Thomas to provide a cutting edge experiential learning space for our students will set us apart and help us attract those talented students who are yearning for these type of creative and educational experiences. A final priority I wanna mention as we think about staying relevant to society's needs is about affordability and access. Affordability and access for our underserved and underrepresented students. Our St. Thomas education is very valuable. We work hard to ensure that. We educate life-ready, values-based leaders who can persuasively communicate, see connections, and solve complex problems in a rapidly changing world. And there's great demand for our graduates. We give an incredible amount of institutional aid to help our students afford a St. Thomas education. And we have generous donors who offset the cost of tuition for our students across need levels. Yet, there remain far too many families and students for whom a St. Thomas education is out of reach. I believe we can and must do more, especially to ensure that we are remaining accessible for all families and students. The financial needs of today's low and middle income students and families are not being adequately met in our country. And the demographics show that high school graduates are coming to us with more need than ever. We must be an institution that finds creative ways to be accessible to more underserved and underrepresented students. And we must continue to strive to create a vibrant, diverse community in which together we work for a more just and inclusive society. Frankly, we can't flourish if we can't do this. It's critical to our future. But we will, we will. As a close, I wanna thank you for your contribution to this greater good. Your dedication to our students is immense and ever flowing. Every day, I see visible signs in you that our mission is front and center. I'm excited to see the progress represented by the rejuvenation of the spiritual heart of our campus, the Chapel of St. Thomas Aquinas. Our chapel will celebrate its 100th anniversary this May. And in May, we will break ground on a 23,000 square foot expansion. It will honor our Catholic roots while becoming an inclusive place for people of all faiths to gather and worship. It will be a visible sign of renewal on our campus as we break ground this May. It will be a sign of hope to our community, and it will inspire us to continue to renew and refresh our commitments. 
So I'm so grateful to you, trustees, staff, faculty, and students who make up this community of St. Thomas. With all sincerity, I tell you, I've never known a group of people as loyal and intentional. I've never worked with such a group that is so dedicated to this university and to the experience for our students, not only today, but for future generations. So I'm honored to be on this journey with you. I wish you all best wishes as we open the spring semester with two and a half feet of snow on the ground. And it's gonna be a great spring semester. We're growing, we're learning. And that's what makes this journey so much fun. If we ever stop learn, growing and learning, we'll stop having fun. So thank you very much. And now if anyone would like to ask a question, you're welcome to try to say it loudly from your seats and I will repeat it or you're welcome to come to the microphone. Yes. Uh, I was asked about the two-year residency requirements for freshmen and sophomores. Uh, you know, many, many universities have two, some have four-year residency requirements. And there are exceptions to all of these requirements to accommodate specific needs. And we will be having similar types of exceptions to ours. We just want to make, uh, for all students who want to participate in the residency requirement, we don't want a uh, financial burden to be an obstacle. Yes, another question? Yeah, what are the revisions about in the newsroom? Uh, we all read the newsroom, Jordan. Is the So there was a question about our new center in the, in the law school and our new position, AVP for Inclusive Excellence. Well, the director of our new center, Dr. Atika Tyner, is here, so I encourage you to speak to her directly afterwards. It's the Center for Race, Equity, and Social Justice. Do I have the title right? Race Leadership, Race, Leadership and Social Justice. Thank you. It's a new center that uh, Dr. Tyner is going to be leading to really help us in, in uh, to study some of the issues around racism, to be a venue for dialogue, to be a venue for increased understanding that is based on rigorous study of racism and, and other forms of inequity in our society. She will be involved in teaching. She'll be involved in, in holding public dialogue. She'll be invo involved in inviting leaders to our campus. Much of it is an outgrowth of her own scholarship and her own expertise. Um, and I invite you to learn more from Dr. Tyner as well. Uh, we also have a, a position AVP for Inclusive Excellence that will be reporting to me. That position is uh, posted on our website and on LinkedIn, which I understand is a, 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 a more accessible post. Uh, we have had, um, there's a search committee that uh, has been formed. We've already had how many applications? 50. Uh, many people, and I know many in this room, are circulating the job posting in their own networks. I know I'm doing that, and I know many people are doing that. Uh, and so I encourage you to continue to do that. And really, we hope this is a person that will uh, help us uh, continue uh, to implement our action plan to combat racism, but also really grow along all dimensions in being a more diverse, equitable, and inclusive university. Any other questions? Well, I want to thank one of our newest leaders, Phil Eston, for being here. Phil, raise your hand. Phil is our, yep.
Phil is our new Vice President and Director of Athletics. Uh, we're delighted to have Phil and Coach Caruso and other coaches who are here with us today. And uh, I just want to say how, I know many of you know this, but St. Thomas Athletics is fully aligned with our commitment to the development of the whole person of our students, our commitment to academic and athletic excellence, and our commitment to living our mission and convictions. And Phil is as a person, his coaches are, and they do a great job with our students, so thank you. Anything else? Okay, well thank you again for coming on a Thursday afternoon, and for those of you listening via technology, thank you. Bye-bye.